Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick, and I'm going to say this one last time, because people keep telling me I suck at making picks, but the reason that I make stupid picks like Delaware over Michigan State is because I don't want to have the same bracket as everybody. When um, Kentucky won it all, if I would have picked Kentucky against my friends, I would have seriously won by a point. Which is just annoying. I, I'd rather I'd rather win by like fifty points. I'd rather just blow them out. I don't I don't really care. I'd rather blow them out or try or or go down trying like that UConn year where I pick UConn to win. I think I beat the people in a money league or not league, but in a money draw pool thing, whatever you want to call it. I think I beat the guy in second place by like thirty three points or something like that, and it's thirty two per round. Uh, last year. I screwed up the Miami pick, and I still beat some people. I didn't win big ones, but I won, like, one-on-ones or stuff like that. And then the Missouri year, that was just awful. That was just god-awful. Uh, I think I beat one person, which is just pathetic on their part. But, yeah, that is kind of my explanation on why I make some of the picks that I do. Um, if you don't like my picks, then I, I don't know what to tell you. Don't use my bracket. Uh... Yeah, that's pretty much gonna how it go. I'm gonna do it this way. You can drag this thing. I'm drag them all the way to the final four. Yeah, Pittsburgh. I don't even know why I'm dragging it. <laughs> They're only going there. I'm gonna use. I think I'm. I'm, I'm gonna move on from uh, Tulsa, and I'm gonna go to Stephen F. Austin. This is a pick that people have problems with. Is Tulsa over UCLA? But Tulsa is not a bad team, and they have a really good coach in Danny Manning. He's a really good coach. He played at Kansas. Um, he was a really good player, and he's a good coach. Um, and Stephen F. Austin isn't an awful pick. They have 31 wins to two losses. They are a good team. And so, that's why I'm going with them. They don't have any, like, huge quality wins, but that doesn't mean anything. Florida Gulf Coast didn't have many quality wins last year, and they did damage. If you don't know that, they did damage. They took out Georgetown, and then they took out the number 7 or 10 seed. I forget who it was. Uh, but they, but they did damage, and then they played Florida decently well. They almost made it to the Elite Eight, which that would have been just crazy. Uh, I'm going to take Ohio State, even though Dayton has a really good chance to upset Ohio State. And then I don't think Western Michigan can beat Syracuse, but I think Dayton may be able to beat Syracuse because Syracuse can't beat anybody. They are just awful right now. They can't, they can't do anything. So I'm going to take Ohio State there. Um, then I'm going to take Kansas to there. And then New Mexico all the way to play uh, Florida. They have two bigs with Baristow and I forget the other guy. Um, I think it's a Russian name or something like that or a European. I don't. Uh, it's a name that I probably can say, but I forget it. And uh, they're both tall, big. Ohio State doesn't have a really big, tall guy, muscular, you know, strength guy down low. Um, and New Mexico's got two of them. Kansas without Embiid. I don't think can take Baristow and whatever his name is. So that's why I'm taking New Mexico there. Uh, down in the east, uh, Virginia all the way to there. And they're going to play George Washington in the round of 32. And Harvard is going to beat Cincinnati. And then Delaware is going to beat Michigan State, the pick that everybody hates. But everybody is taking Michigan State to the Final Four of the National Championship. So if this actually happens... If Delaware actually upsets Michigan State, this is what this is how my brain works. If Delaware upsets Michigan State, I automatically have a huge, huge lead on everybody else because they've got a team going to the Final Four or in winning the national championship that got eliminated early. And I still think people will disagree with this, but I think Harvard has a chance to beat Michigan State. They don't have the same talent, but Harvard is not a bad team. They played good. They uh, did good in the Ivy League. Their only loss was to Yale in overtime, and I think I watched that game, and I don't think they would they should have lost. I think uh, they they uh, I, I, I'm they should have beat Yale. They should have gone undefeated in the Ivy League, and I think if they would have done that, would they may have gotten a ten seed or a nine. Uh, but they're a good team. But I'm gonna take Virginia over. Um, I'm not. I don't really think I, they might beat Michigan State. Tommy Amaker does know a little bit about. Uh, Tom Izzo's coaching style. He was in the Big Ten. He coached Michigan for I think 
three or four years. He didn't really have any good teams, so I don't really I don't really blame those bad years on him. He didn't even get his first recruiting class until I think his third or fourth year was his first decent recruiting class, and I think he won 20 games, but he got fired because he'd suck the beginning years. Um, so I'm going to take Providence over North Carolina. I think Providence is hot. Uh... They won the uh, Big East tournament. U North Carolina got absolutely manhandled in the game against Pitt because Pitt was just more uh, aggressive and strong. I guess uh, that doesn't sound that doesn't sound right, but they were they were more of a physical team. There we go. And North Carolina really only has Marcus Page. Really only have Marcus Page. If they get down, Marcus Page is the only one that really can bail them out with threes. And my, James Michael McAdoo is pretty good, but it's it's the Marcus Page show. If they want to make it fast Iowa State too, it, it's going to be the James Michael or it's going to be the Marcus Page show. Uh, UConn and Villanova. I like uh, James Bell and Hilliard and Pinkston. I I think Villanova. They haven't played top level competition. Uh, if I go down here and click, uh, they they don't have huge quality. Like they beat Kansas. Creighton molly whopped them twice. Uh, Syracuse beat them. That was a closer game than sixteen. Uh, it was it was a good first half. I think I don't I don't want to sound stupid. I think it was a long time ago. I think it was I think it was a decent game for a while, and then Syracuse kind of pulled away. That was when Syracuse was good when they were really good. Now they're like bleh. Uh, they also had a five point win against Iowa, and that's when Iowa was, was good. Iowa's record of twenty and eleven or twenty and thirteen, whatever they are, um, does not really reflect how good they were. Uh, they had that really bad streak. They lost like six out of seven, and so they were looking like a really good Final Four team. Roy Devon Marble was hot. He was doing he was doing things, and uh, he was he was pretty good. And uh, the Milwaukee, those two wins against Wisconsin Green Bay are really good. Wisconsin Green Bay is actually a pretty good team. Uh, one of the teams that got snubbed from the tournament, uh, them and SMU were, I think, the next two that should have been in. And so that's not a, that's not an awful uh, going two uh, of three against them. Uh, it's it's very difficult to beat a team three times like Michigan, Michigan State. I did not think for one second Michigan was going to beat uh, Michigan State for a third time. Uh, Tom Izzo is just too good of a coach, and that Michigan State team is just too good of a team. Uh, and then I'm going to take Villanova over Iowa State. I think uh, Villanova has the pieces to be able to take apart Iowa State. Um, Iowa State has problems. Um, they they do have some issues. They do sometimes get cold from the field. You saw that against Baylor in the start of the first half of the Big 12 championship. They ended up coming. They Baylor just ended up getting destroyed in the in the the second half, but Villanova, I think, um, they know how to score that Seton Hall game. I don't think they came out ready to play. I don't, I thought they, I think they just thought it would be a cakewalk. They wouldn't have to do anything and that they would easily just run over Seton Hall and they didn't. So that's the thing. And I'm going to take Villanova to the final four, uh, because Michigan State's usually con consensus pick there, but Virginia is not in a bad pick at all either. I might go with them in my final because people have them only going to where they would play Virginia, Michigan State, and if Virginia would happen to win, I could be in business then. I have like when my, I fill out brackets, my brain goes. I fill out a bracket. I'll probably do this just for those people that hate on me for my bracket picks. I'll probably make a bracket of how I would pick it if I was just if I just played by myself. If I was just a lonely. A lonely loser who didn't play against people for money um, or just play against people for bragging rights uh, I will pro I'll probably show that I won't keep it up because it's it's gonna look generally how everybody else's is so what I do is I try to sit here and I try to contemplate okay Michigan State they took them to the final four if I happen to pick it right with that Delaware upset it would be crazy it would it would destroy people's brackets and even Virginia that would that would destroy some people's brackets because people are banking. You you watch Sports Center or you watch that bracketology. You got Jay Billis. You got um, what you call it, Dickie V. You've got everybody. Almost everybody has Michigan State. And my logic is, if you take Virginia or you take Delaware, because I I don't actually think Delaware is gonna win, but 
I would I would be happy if they happened to win. Um, but I have to think about it, Virginia and Villanova. I think both of them could beat Michigan State along with Iowa State. Uh, I don't think Michigan State is a, a god team like that Kentucky team was. They were ridiculously good. Like that year, I took Kentucky to the finals, I think. And I played them against Kansas, and I took Kansas just um, so that my bracket would be different. Obviously, Kansas lost. I had Kansas play in Missouri, actually. Missouri beat Kentucky in the Final Four. That was that year. Uh, but it, it, it's just it's just I have to I want to take I want to take a different route. I want to go away from the grain. I don't want to have the traditional picks like uh, what we'll get into over here. This isn't a crazy upset. The uh, Arizona Oklahoma State game. Oklahoma State is a lot better than a nine seed. That three game suspension of Marcus Smart and that huge losing streak they had like seven games in a row, six or seven games in a row. Uh, if they wouldn't have lost that, they'd be a two seed maybe. If uh, Marcus Smart and them would have played like they could all year, they would be a two, three, maybe a four, possibly even a one seed. They're that good of a team. Uh, LeBron Nash is kind of. Uh, an underrated uh, player. Uh, Marcus Smart is obviously the face of that team uh, with uh, Markel Brown as Robin if he's Batman. And I just like Oklahoma State. I believe that they can beat Arizona. Uh, Arizona without Brandon Ashley has not been the same team. And I think I think Oklahoma State takes care of business. They got to get past Gonzaga first. Uh, if Oklahoma State looks for, looks ahead as to playing Arizona, then I think the I think Gonzaga will take them. Gonzaga is not a bad team, but if you guys remember Gonzaga and Kelly Olynyk last year, they're the ones that got beat by Wichita State. That very good Gonzaga team that got beat by Wichita State. And so, yeah, I'm gonna go with North Dakota State. They're a good team. Oklahoma's kind of sliding a little bit here, and I think North Dakota State takes care of business. I'm going to go with San Diego State and then take San Diego State over North Dakota State, and then Oklahoma State over San Diego State. I'm going to come down to the bottom part of the West bracket where I'm going to take... Ah, I want to take Nebraska and Taron Petaway, but I this one I'm going to, I'm going to go back and forth with until probably Thursday around noon. I'm probably going to struggle with this one around till about Tuesday, uh, noon on Tuesday. But as of right now, I'm taking Baylor, and then I'm taking Louisiana Lafayette over Creighton. Those three versus four teams, they don't happen much, but I'm taking two this tournament. Taking two, even though I think that Western Michigan Syracuse one's an interesting one. I think Western Michigan has a decent chance to, to pull off the upset on Syracuse. Uh, but I'm going to take Baylor over Louisiana Lafayette. I would take Baylor over Creighton anyway, even though I think Dougie, Dougie McDermott, Dougie McBuckets uh, could easily take them to here. Um, that's still that's still a possibility of a huge shakeup in my brackets is if I, took Louis, if I took Creighton over Louisiana Lafayette and pulled Creighton all the way to the Elite Eight, nah, losing to Marcus Smart and company. I'm going to take Oregon over uh, BYU and like last year there was a two over there was a, a Florida Gulf Coast Coast over Georgetown the year before there was Norfolk State versus uh, Missouri and they and uh, Duke Lehigh so it's not crazy that a two gets upset by a 15 it's happened there's been three in the last two years I don't remember if there was one during the UConn year uh, but I, this is the one that I would keep my eye on, Wisconsin-American. American is a good defensive team. Wisconsin at some times tries to focus more on defense than they do scoring, even though they're a very high-octane three-point shooting offensive team, and Frank Kaminsky is a boss down low. I do think American could give them issues, and I think Oregon can give them issues. Oregon stretches the floor. Lloyd is a great point guard. But I'm going to take Wisconsin for now, but I might go American. I might go American just, just in case. Because I'm taking Oregon over Wisconsin anyway, because I think Oregon's a terrible matchup for Wisconsin. Uh, and then I'm going to take Oregon for now to the Elite Eight. Uh, putting two sevens in the Elite Eight. I think I got two ones, a nine, and a two. And so I'm going to come down here. And I'm taking Cal Poly, Texas Southern. 
not because I think they'll win, just because I want to take them for fun, uh, because I'm still torn on this one, the Kansas State-Kentucky game. Whoever wins this game, Kansas State, whether it's Kansas State or Kentucky, I'm taking them over Wichita State anyway. So I'm just for fun taking Cal Poly versus Texas Southern, whichever one wins that game, or Wichita State, because it's a whole whopping point to risk, because I'm not taking Wichita State any farther. So it's a whole point I'm risking, so it's whatever. Uh, I think NC State and TJ Warren get past St. Louis and Xavier Louisville. I wish, I wish so bad that NC State didn't get Louisville uh, after they beat St. Louis because I would take them. If NC State played like uh, Harvard, switch places with Harvard, I'd be all over taking NC State over Michigan State. Uh, I think TJ Warren is is way underrated by everybody. He's he is a great player, the leading scorer in the ACC. Uh he's he's just good, but I can't take him over Louisville. I just can't. And then I'll take Louisville to the Elite Eight. I don't know. I just can't take uh TJ Warren and NC State over Louisville. I think it would be too risky of a pick. Uh Tennessee and then Mercer, my other Huge upset in Mercer over Duke. I don't know. I just have that feeling. You ever get that feeling when you're making picks for your bracket? And you're like, I feel like Mercer is going to beat Duke. Last year, I had a friend that I played against. Um, he took Florida Gulf Coast over Georgetown. And, uh, he, you know, he just had that feeling. And I was, it was crazy. I was watching that game. And, oh, my gosh, we were watching that game. It was crazy. Uh, Texas and, obviously, Michigan. Uh, Tennessee and Michigan play each other in the Sweet 16, and then Michigan takes out Tennessee, and then once again, my matchup that I debate about, Russ Smith versus Nick Stauskas, uh, Glenn Robinson III versus Montrez Harrell, um, it, it's just an interesting, I think the X factor in this game is how well Karis LeVert plays, along with uh, the bigs, uh, Van Trees versus the combination of Morgan and Horford, um, why I can't think of uh, how good Luke Hancock plays if he's knocking down threes. I think it's lights out for Michigan. If Hancock can't knock down threes and Russ Smith's got to put up 30 points, I think Michigan wins. So that's why I'm still a little bit hesitant on this game. I'm not entirely sure who I want to take. And so as of right now, though, I'm sticking with my boys in Louisville, sticking with Rick Pitino. Uh, I wish these two wouldn't have gotten matched up because if the four seed over here was Michigan State or any of the other four, San Diego State, definitely San Diego State, I definitely would just have taken Michigan, but they had to throw them in the same bracket. My bracket got, I like Joel Lenardi's bracket prediction from like four days ago or something like that, where he had Oklahoma State in this division. He had Michigan out in the east. Um as the number two or three seed. I forget it was two or three. Uh, but it was just a whole lot better. My final four teams off of that was Oklahoma State. Louisville was out west, I think, as the three or two. Uh, so it could have been Oklahoma State, Louisville, Michigan, and Florida. It was set up like that. And then now two of them got thrown into the same thing. And um, I got kind of screwed. But for now, I'm taking Louisville, and I'm taking them to the final game, and I think I'm going to take Villanova in a little bit of an upset pick here over uh, top-seeded Florida State. I'm taking Oklahoma State. I don't know why I didn't send them to the final four, uh, but I'm going to take Villanova in a huge upset of Florida. Uh, it, it should be an interesting matchup if they play uh, that uh, Casey Prather and uh, Finney Smith off the bench. Uh uh, Scotty Wilbekin. It it it'll be interesting. I'm I'm excited to watch Florida play against even the crappy teams. I just like watching Florida play. Um, last year when Michigan and Florida um were thrown in the same bracket, I was upset about that because I thought Florida was a Final Four team as well. There's just some of those things like in this bracket, this is hard one. I think one through four are all possible uh, Final Four contenders. In this one. I think one through four are also final four contenders. I don't think Wichita State that much, but in this one, I only think one, maybe. Kansas is kind of a final four contender, but without Joel Allen Bede, they are definitely not a final four contender. This one's a poor region. Uh, the three is Syracuse. Syracuse has really good players, but Syracuse has been playing awful. Uh, so as of right now, unless they come out and 
absolutely demolish Ohio State. I, I don't think they're they're the same team. And UCLA, they're sporadic. Yes, they just won the uh, Pac-12 tournament, but take a look last year at Florida State. Florida State was a hot team coming off of winning the ACC tournament. Um, no, was it last? It was the year before that, I think. Yeah, it was the year before that. Uh, they won the ACC, and they came into the tournament, and they got... I think second round, like round 32 I think, um, it, because they were sporadic throughout the season. I could see UCLA winning, and if they play Stephen F. Austin, I bet I think they beat Stephen F. Austin, but if they play VCU, I think VCU's Havoc defense, I think UCLA doesn't make it past the round of 32. Uh, that's just that's just my personal opinion. And then over here, I think one is a one, two, maybe Creighton. Our final four contenders, but other than that, it's eh, it's mm, nah, and uh, so I've really narrowed all my picks down to about about twelve four to fourteen uh, final four contenders, about six or eight national championship contenders, and about four actual national champion contenders. So I'll, I'll finally have it fully narrowed down. I will have the video up by twelve. 14 on Thursday before the first game tips and so as of right I think I'm in this one I'm gonna take Villanova uh, to win it all Villanova was my pick before they got beat by Seton Hall and uh I don't know I might stick with my pick I might stick with my gut of Villanova uh but we will have to see uh so I hope you guys enjoyed I hope you guys got a little bit of an understanding on why I do the picks that I do and why some of them don't make a whole lot of sense um, and I hope you guys uh, understand that. And I do know I do know a lot about basketball. I do watch an insane amount. I'm going to end up watching all for a portion at least, at least 10 to 20 minutes of uh, like game time, 10 to 20 minute game time wise of every single game that goes on. All 48 games this weekend. Um, I don't. I I got Thursday through Sunday off of work. And that is all I'm doing. I'm going to have this laptop, my other laptop, my desktop computer, and my flat screen TV all set to games. And I'm just going to watch an unreal amount of basketball. So yeah, uh, that's the thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you guys all in my next video. Peace out, guys. Oh, how won't you do